Kum Len in a black tomorrow, Chof Ches El, KHL. And um, the Gemara, we are up to today's blot is Dav Hayes, or the Chof Ches and Abdal and Bayes. We had so far two arguments between Rav and Rabbi Yechelen regarding the Allah like Rav. One argument was regarding um, if an egg was laid on Shabbos, what's it been the following day if it's Yom Tov? Then we had a Machlek as Rav. And Ravasi, if an egg was born the first day Yom Tif, what's the din regarding the second day Yom Tif? And uh, Rav holds that you are the second day Yom Tif, because we only keep it because it's fake at the Yomah. And therefore, Mamano Shech, you're allowed to um, eat the egg on the second day. Now we're up to the third argument, which is Rosh Hashanah. Is Rosh Hashanah any different than any other Yom Tif? Rosh Hashanah, we know that it's all the keep two days as well. But is Rosh Hashanah any different than any other Yom Every Yom Tif, the reason why we keep two days is fake at the Yomah. And today it's a minute. We continue the way we did it then. We took it upon ourselves. What about Rosh Hashanah? It says the Gemara, eat more. We learned three lines from the bottom. The Abdallah from the base. Shle Yom and Tevin Shle Hashanah. Two Rosh Hashanah. Rav Shmuel and Tavayo. Both Rav and Shmuel say Neil the Beze Asur the Beze. Rosh is different than all other Yom Tevin. In contrast, all other Yom Tevin was mutter the second day, and Rosh Hashanah is forbidden because we're going to treat Rosh Hashanah. It's not a sveik of the Yom. It's definitely midraban. The first day is Matayz and Rabban, or vice versa. But it's definitely to keep two days. What's the story? But he's showing in the beginning. He came to 30 days. They waited all day in the base of Migdash to see whether Aiden will come and tell us they saw the new moon or not. If somebody can please unmute themselves. Um, because all day long we're anticipating that maybe. Sorry, that was me by mistake. Right. <laughs> they treated the whole day uh, like Rosh Hashanah, and they were waiting for the Adim to come. Pamach, as it once happened, Yishtoa Adim lover, the Adim delayed in their arrival, but his Kalku Halavi in Bashir. And the Shir, when it came to the Tomit Shalbein Abayim, they sang the wrong song. They thought, well, it's not going to be Yom Tov anymore, and therefore they sang the weekday song, and turned out to be um, that it was that was Rosh Hashanah because the Aiden came right after they brought the Tomet Shabbat Shabbat. Regarding the Tomet Shabbat they always decided to sing the Shir Shul Choyl, even if they found out the Rosh Hashanah, because very seldom the Aiden comes so early in the morning, and he wanted to be you know uniform. So every year the Tomet Shabbat they always sang the Shir Shul Choyl. So there's no issue there. But if it was Yamtiv, then they should have sang Tomet Shabbat Shabbat the Shir of Yamtiv. But once the Aiden came right after Mincha, so they sang the wrong song. So then they're very concerned. So they decided that they will no longer receive any more witnesses if they come after Mincha. But what happens? They did come and they know they're about to make a Shkodesh. We, we tell them, to, uh, give us your Aedus tomorrow. But We're not going to accept the Aedus. And therefore, we are going to say that today, the rest of the day, we're going to keep it as if it's Rosh Hashanah. But tomorrow will be Rosh Hashanah. As far as Yom Kippur is concerned, we're going to start counting from tomorrow. But we're going to have two days of Rosh Hashanah because we don't want people to be mazals on the Rosh Hashanah. So therefore, because in the future, if we're not going to keep the rest of the Rosh Hashanah, they're going to say, why why bother keeping, you know, the tent of the day, Aiden might not come at all, what a waste. So therefore, they said, no, it's definitely Rosh Hashanah and Rabban. So here you have two days of Rosh Hashanah, but it's not because it's Sveik the Yomah, because we know already exactly what it is, but we just determined that this is going to be the halach. Now we are going to conclude the first day as if it's Rosh Hashanah, but the second day we're going to actually celebrate Rosh Hashanah and we are going to count everything from the second day. Taste already asks, why aren't you worried about the carbon Musaf? We know that the carbon Tomet Shabbat Abayim is the last carbon of the day. And if it was a Rosh Hashanah, they should have brought a carbon Musaf. So why weren't they worried that they missed out the Musaf? So the answer is, they would have brought the Musaf after the Tomet Shabbat Abayim, even though there's a mitzvah say that says the last carbon of the day should be the Tomet Shabbat Abayim. But we read a little Sochim that from test that if, let's say, somebody was on the seventh day of their tahara, and they have to bring, the, or their eighth day, they have to bring a carbon, they don't bring, didn't mean the carbon, they cannot participate. So we're going to allow them to bring that carbon, because that mitzvah's assay of carbon Pesach, which involves chorus, pushes away the mitzvah's assay, even though it's not even the Eid's mitzvah's assay, it's the, it's the coin of not bringing up any kabonas after carbon Tomei Shabbat Abayim. Same with Musaf. Musaf is a mitzvah Sharabi. And the mitzvah shurabim pushes away the, the avera of not bringing up any kabbalas after the carbon tomit shel shachar. Or Tesha says, when you have no choice, you have no choice. 
Not because one mitzvah pushes away the other mitzvah, it's only that that's how it should be. That's a prescription. But in case, I guess you have no choice, the witnesses didn't come earlier, they came now, you definitely could bring the carbon most of afterwards. We weren't worried about that as well. <clears throat> um, so therefore, so what happened over here? So then, so, we, so this is a vada de rabbonot. So it's no longer a sveik of the yana. It's definitely one day mahatoy, one day rabbonot. So therefore, an egg lays, it comes like one long day. So if an egg is laid one day to shana, it's forbidden the other day as well. <clears throat> okay, so that's why the rabbish mohol, the shana is different than all the yam So it's not because of a suffix, it's a vada de Okay. <clears throat> um, so therefore, all those who are far away, so, you know, all those, so when did this happen? Only if the Aiden came after Mincha. If the Aiden came before Mincha, then only that day was Hashanah. But those far away didn't know if the Aiden came before Mincha or after Mincha, if you're more than a few hours away. So therefore, they always kept two days as if it's about that two days. So it's one Kedusha, not because of Sveik the Yen. Says the Gemara, Omar Abzal Abba, Mitakonda, Sabiyach Mazake, but once Sabiyach Mazake came along, we're going to learn in Mora Shoshana Mishnah a list of Takonas. Sabiyach Mazake made after the Churb Mishamigdush to continue or change a number of things. So, what did he do regarding the Shoshana? Where they, they still did Kiddush Achaydush based on witnesses, but there's no longer a concern that the witnesses will come after Menchip, because who cares? There's no carbon Tamit Shabbat Abayim anyway. So, the Abba says that after the after Mechazak instituted the Eilich, and he said that you can accept witnesses all day, then Bayim Mutalis, they're no longer they kept two days of Shoshana, because who cares what time the Aiden came? They kept only one day of Shoshana. And therefore, and those further away kept two days only for the sake of the Yemen. So it goes back to the din that the Rosh Hashanah, if it's two days, is only for the sake of the Yemen. Egg laid the first day is permitted the second day. So he says here, um, he made all day long. And therefore, anybody who did who kept Rosh Hashanah two days is purely because of the sake of the Yemen. <clears throat> we just don't know which day was Rosh Hashanah. But not because the Chacham said, oh, they're coming after Tom and Shabbat Abayim, we're going to, because of the problem of the Karmic Tomic, we are going to definitely make it two days. It was no longer an issue. No, this, no, the Shana, according to Rabba, is no different than any other Yom Tov. Says the Yemur, Amalei Abayim, of course, Abayim won't let him alone. Abayim said to him, but Rabba Shmuel, the Amit Tavayim, Be Yasuda. But then Rabba Shmuel both say that an egg laid for the Shana, they're talking about now, even after Abayim Zakai. Amalei Rabba said to him, I don't understand. I mean, look, I'm telling you, I know Abayim Zakai. I'm quoting you um, a Mishnah about Rabbi Yechim Mazakeh, but at Abba, you're asking me a question for Rabbi Shmuel. Says the Gemara, no, the Rabbi Shmuel Kashim must be seen, how can Rabbi Shmuel rule than Rosh Hashanah today? It's like the game of it's one long day, and that's why we have them know about Shechiyon, we have this whole issue, how do we make Shechiyon the second night, and we have to have new fruits or new clothes, like Kashim, it's not a problem. Holon v'holohu, they will answer, according to Rabbi, Rabbi Shmuel who, who is talking about the people in Bavel, and I'm talking about the people in Israel. The people in Israel that generally do one day. So therefore, for them, Rosh Hashanah was in the Sveika. But we, um, we are doing two days the way we did in the beginning. Since that first Akana, like this, by us, the very first, it was a time in, in the beginning when we started keeping Rosh Hashanah two days, because it was the Chachami came along and said it's definitely considered one long day because of the story about the carbon Tamit. And then after Yav Yechmazaki abolished, you know, that, that, that uh, he sort of accepted Adim all day long, we still continue keeping two days. And because there was never a year that we didn't keep two days, so whatever we're doing today is a continuation of when we started. So this is when we started, Rosh Hashanah was like one long day. Because that's how it started back then. So, so too, when um, when it continues, even today, it's like one long day. But in Eretz Yisrael, after the Yechem Zav came along, Yitake, they only kept Rosh Hashanah one day. And those places that kept it two days was only because of Sveik and the Yemen. They weren't sure. So, in other words, there was a time when they kept Rosh Hashanah only one day in Eretz Yisrael, after Yechem Zav came And now, when it went back to two days, for them, it goes with only because of Sveik and the Yemen. Because you know they don't know what's going on in Yerushalayim, and therefore Net Yisrael by them Rishona is a sveik of the Yoma, and for Chutzlar it's for us we're continuing where we started. We never it was never a year that we didn't keep two days, observe two days. So therefore for us it's like one long day. That's a to Rab, but that's not the halach. That's going to Rab. Says the Gemara, Rabbi Yisav Rabbi Yisav disagrees. He argues with Rab, but he says after even after Bechem Bezake for everyone universally even Net Yisrael Rishona is two days. Not because of Sveik the Yemen, but because it's one long day. An egg is us. My time, why? Have you double Since Avicham Zakai made a bezin. And they came along and they instituted 
this is the made of this thing that the Chachamim said, the way we understand your abuse right now, that an egg is forbidden. So they came along and said an egg is forbidden on Yom Tov. It was a Takana Chachamim. And they decided Rosh Hashanah in, in, in the beginning, before the Rechazaka, is one long day. And because they decided Rosh Hashanah is one long day, um, if Adim come after Mincha, they decide definitely Rosh Hashanah is one long day. And we have a rule. Once the Chachamim come along, a Bezin comes along and makes a rule, for everybody, then in order to overturn that rule, you need a larger bezin in number, in quantity, and in quality. The caliber of the people there should be greater in stature. So, um, so therefore, you need another minion. Okay, where are we? Uh, now, the Gemara doesn't say here you need a minion rather, uh, larger in size and larger in caliber, because over here, the reason for the Isser, in fact, the big machlek is a shrink. I'm going to tell you how some are shrink. Where the Hachal make a Takana, you want to overturn it, you have to be larger in number and larger in stature. You know, like Hill with Prusba will learn to get in the form of love there. But when, um, remind me, tomorrow we have to make a Prusba. But if you, um, <clears throat> over here with the Hachal gave a reason of their law, because we're scared, Adam, Adam come after Milch, we're scared, you know, because we missed the shear. And as long as that, because they gave us the reason, then once the reason is no longer valid, for example, if I came along and said, we could accept Adam all day long, then he still doesn't automatically fade away. You need another peasant to come along and overrule it. But this time, you don't need it to be greater in number and greater in quality, because it's much easier to overturn something, because the first peasant sort of qualified what they said. And, but more a shame, well, if the best, the first band came along and said, this is the reason, if they, part of their edict was, we are banning so-and-so, we're proscribing so-and-so, because we're worried like snakes, water overnight, because, you know, we left overnight, you know, because of snakes. But today we say there's no snakes around, you're allowed to. There the Chachamim would have said that we don't want you to drink water laid and left overnight without lid, because there are snakes and you can let, leave some venom behind and it's dangerous. So if, they, if that becomes part of the edict, the reason, then if the reason is no longer applicable, then the it is also no longer applicable. Okay, or others say because this didn't. Okay, let's, let's continue back. The whole davar shemini milachatid. So therefore, Rabbi Yisrael says that was um, since Rabbi Yisrael Mezake did not come along and permit the egg, he allowed the edim to come all day long. But nowhere did he say in his new takana. But and therefore eggs. Blade the first day and permitted the second day. So, therefore, the original Takana Khan, that eggs are us are still there, even though the reason is no longer extant. There's nobody who came along and canceled it. So, therefore, that's why today Rosh Hashanah is considered one long day because Abiyah Mazaka did not cancel that particular part of the original Takana. It says the Gemara, and first of all, it goes, goes on. Omar Abiyah said, um, uh, we'll, and we'll come back to this answer of Yisuf, as we'll soon see, the Gemara is going to ask, when did they ever come up with a ruling about a bay in the first place of Yechim Zakeh had to be permitted? As a bay is going to ask, all they did was they said, Adim after, we no longer accept Adim after Milcha, and that was a consequence of a ruling. So Rabbi Yechim Zakeh changed that ruling, and therefore the consequence should be different. They never made a ruling initially about the egg. As we'll see. How do I know that you need another, that even though the reason fades away, you have to cancel it? Says the pasuk, lech emelim the aftermath. I tell the Eden Shul, emelim for three days. I told them not to be involved with their wives, and then tell them after mat. They go back to the tent. So that's reason number one. So we see clearly from here that even though the the, the, the only reason why they separate from the wives is to prepare for mat matera. Mat was over. It should be automatic that they can go back home. And no, the pasuk had to tell them go back home. Big machlek is showing What happens if the bezin says clearly we are making an isa for the next fifty years? When the 50 years expire, what happens then? Is it automatic or you need to cancel it? So they want to bring an eye from here. The title says that you should have, you should prepare yourself for three days. And yet you're telling me that after three days, you still need a head to go back to the wives. That's some Rishayim. Other Rishayim say no. The title didn't say prepare yourself for three days. The title says prepare yourself for the third day, but didn't give a timeline how long they should continue separating from their wives. Could be forever. That's why I need a pasuk to be matter. And when this came to a big machlekes was chayim and rabbi negation. Chayim and negation by marrying two wives and all that was till the end of the fourth millennia. He said to the end of the fourth millennia. What happens in this millennia here? Is it still 
also chayin or ben yesh or not. If you hold that you need another bezin to cancel it, even though he gave a time a timeline, so then yes, the Easter of chayin and yesh continues till today, which is what we do. We conduct ourselves. But others disagree. They say it came to the end of the fourth millennium; it automatically disappears. You don't need another bezin to come along and cancel it because he clearly said to the end of the fourth millennium. So um, that's the gay halach lemaisa. So that's one passing. Now he brings another passing. If you're not satisfied with this passing, you're more explanation why it wouldn't be. But Aymid, there's another passing that says, Don't be Baltazar. Um, you should make sure people do not encroach onto Mount Harsinai. But he said, which either means when the last key of when you extend the Yebel, the last sound of the Jubilee, no, the last sound of the Shafer, after that you can go. Or it means when you, get, you walk away from the Shafer, no longer blowing, you can climb the mountain. Again, he told them to separate from the mountain because of Harsina, or the Kedusha. Once it's Harsina, is it is over, the Kedusha is over, they should be able to go there and, and you know, and put, their, and put their animals in the pasture, and yet, and let the animals graze it. And yet, you needed a Pasuk to permit them. And then, another, a third proof, in case you're not happy with that, Kerem Levai Hoya Oyler Shalim, they used to bring, and this is to show you that even Amid Rabbana, even the, not only the Abish, but even the Rabbana needs another best because it says that Kerem Levi, the fourth year, what you do is the first three years of the, the fourth year, you take the fruits with you to the Shalim. Otherwise, you redeem it. And with the money, go to Shalim and you buy something. So, Kerem Levi, you go to Shalim, you go to the Chol Tzad. We don't want you to, the Chacham said, you know, we don't want you to redeem. If you live within one day's traveling, make the trip to the Shalim. Why? Because we want your Shalim to look beautiful. And people, there's a lot of fruits there. It makes the whole city gay, you know, very happy. Zuhi Tchuman. This is the distance. Eilat min hadarim. Now, this Eilat Lechayde cannot be the Eilat that we have today because it's, it's a, far, a person can only walk 40 kilometers approximately a day. And to, from Yishlaim to Eilat is a lot further than 40, uh, 40 um, what do you call it? And there's a big argument when it talks about Eilat. What today, if Eilat is a power, it's all not. You need to keep two days and one day. And so there might be two Eilats. Akrabat min hatsafen. And that's from the north, Lud min Hamayrib, Lud from the west, and Yardim min Hamidra, from the northern from the and the east on the right. What's the reason why the Chum make this takana? They don't want you to redeem the fruits, but actually bring it up with you. We want to adorn the streets of the Shalim and the marketplace of the Shalim fruits. It makes it look so beautiful. But Tanya, we learned the story. Kerem Levi, Rabbi had a Kerem Levi. He lived on the east. No, if you travel from Lud to the east, you'll hit your Shalim. He lived on the east side of Lud, and was less than a day's traveling to Shalim. In other words, his fruits, he couldn't redeem them. He had to go and bring them to Shalim. So, Bikish Lahav Kidalani, but he was too old. He didn't have the, the care to go bring all these fruits into Shalim. So, what he did was he wanted to make it hefty for the poor people. The poor people should then collect it and they will take it with them to Shalim and have what to eat. So, it's, it's a win win. Amrulay Talmud of his students said to him, Rebbe, his students said to him, they said to Rabbi Lezer, your friends already convened, they're already convened and said, you know what? Now that after Chor Beis Hamikdash, Rabbi Leza was a student of Yechon Bezaka. He lived at the time of Chor Beis so After Chor Beis Hamikdash, and they said, "Look, that you, after Chor Beis Hamikdash, there's no point in adorning the streets of Shalim Who for the goyim to, to make them feel even more that they that the, the, the prize was worth more? No, there's no point in adorning the streets of Shalim under the under the under control the dominion of the goyim, and and therefore you don't have to bother and you can go back to the normal way. No, it's a kind of automatically is bottled." Man Chaberecha, who were your friends there that got together? They had to convene the Rebbe Zakai, Rebbe Zakai. In other words, they told him because your friends convened the Sanhedrin and they have cancelled this law, therefore you don't worry about it. Had it not been for the fact that they convened and, and cancelled the law, he would have had to make the Shlaim. But the reason is no longer there. The reason of of being ma'atir of adorning the streets of Shlaim is no longer present, and yet he couldn't have escaped from that. Time of the Nimnu. The only reason why is because they they, they got together and they made this convention. How long Nimnu like? So therefore, it does not prove that even by um, by an uh, uh, an, uh, an edict, a takana, an institution, the rabbanon, if you want to cancel, overturn it, you need another group of rabbanon to cancel it. So you might want to know why Rabbi Yisif uh, had to bring three different proofs. This is what he said. says, I want you to be ready. There's two ways of learning. Shat Teisa learns and he's ready for the third day. Others say he's ready for three days. If you learn he's ready for three days, that means I gave you a timeline, and yet you had to overturn it. If it's for the third day, I never gave you a timeline. Maybe even afterwards, you have to continue preparing yourself, always be in that state of mode. I'm just telling you that the, the event happening on the third day. How you look, you'll be prepared for the third day. I'll teach you, Alicia, you should not approach your wife. 
Then it says, Leich and Lehem go back and tell them, Shul, how they go back home? Lumberly, after Matan played it, it could have automatically gone back. Shema Minah, called Dovashim Minyan, anything which, and when the Abisha says something, that's a Choshim thing. So the Minah Chalatiri, you need another Minyan to overturn. So the Abisha had to overturn himself. The Chit Tamer, but if you can argue, the Mitzvah, you know, so who told you that the reason why Hashem said Lech and Melehem, Shuba Lech, Lechem La Lech, is in order to overturn his first Takon, and maybe the Abisha said it to give them a Mitzvah, a new Mitzvah that tonight I want everybody at Matan to go have relations with their wife. Maybe that's the purpose of that pasuk. That's why I bring another pasuk. Maybe you're right, but I bring another pasuk. It says, Mech, see, but it's a touch mark. I'm here. Once I stop, stop blowing the shape, then find them out. Mech, see, it says a pasuk. Gam hatsoin vahabokor al yiru. It says, make sure that your flock and your sheep and your cattle do not graze on the mountain. So the Chayda, it says, Ahar Hahu, that mountain, not a mountain, that, that, that particular mountain, as long as it's Kaidish. So the Mishrech Hayyabal Lumbly, one year, possibly Mishrech Hayyabal, Shema Minah, to tell you, Dabba Shem Minyan, Shem Minah, there's no mitzvah here, obviously to cancel. Now, this is a big problem because the Possig Mishrech Hayyabal Hema Yalabahar is talking about the first Luchas. The Possig where it talks about Gamma Tsemba Bokal Al Yiro Murahara Hu is talking about the second Luchas. So therefore, they, you can't ask me why the first luchas, the Abisha had to tell them to call them that they can go back to the mountain when the second luchas, Hashem said to them, I don't want you to graze on that mountain. <laughs> that it's, uh, you're right. But the first luchas, they had to be told. So Rashi therefore learns a very interesting thing, which will show him have a hard time with. But Rashi says that in fact, after Mount Taylor, they still couldn't graze. They, they stayed in that area for over a year, almost a year, till the 20th day of the year. They, they still couldn't graze on that mountain until the 20th day of the year, because means as long as the mountain was Kaidish, and that as long as there was a cloud over the mountain after the first Luchas, after the second Luchas, after the build of Mishkan, as long as there was a cloud over the mountain before they set their trip and started moving on, no one can graze on the mountain. And therefore, when it said, it's not talking about Matzai Shavuos, it's talking about Chafir a year later. That's an Ashenus. Places and other Ashenim saying, so what do you mean? It sounds posh of Shat Luchumish that right after the Taylor was given, they were able to, to, um, to, to go back onto the mountain and have their animals graze on that mountain. But the Gemara, what the Gemara is saying here is just like the by second Luchas, it says in uh, Maharahu, it's obvious it means as long as Kedush on the mountain. So the first Luchas, um, Hashem said, I don't want you to graze the mountain, just the Baltas Om. Keep the people away from this particular mountain. It's clear because you're about to receive the Taita. So they should have been automatically permitted once the Taita was given. Yet Abish had to give them license to go ahead. He says, you know, Sheikh Ayyabul must be that if a bezin comes out with a takana, you need to bring another bezin in to cancel that takana. Um I can tell me and then Abish continues to explain himself. Hani means with the ice, maybe only if it's a prescription of the trader, they need another possible trader to permit it. But when the Chacham come along and make an issue if, if the reason doesn't apply anymore, it should automatically become mutter. That's why we bring the story of Kerem Levai. Toshma Kerem Levai. This whole idea of Kerem Levai, that we want you not to redeem the fruit, but bring the fruit to the Shalim, is only in order to beautify your Shalim. So it's only a Takan of Chachamim. And it's only because of Chachamim. And, um, and yet, they had to tell him that Yabir Chibazaka canceled it. Well, Kerem who called they told him, Kanim no lecha chabirecha, we threw a matre. So, the Gemara, we came up by Yanami, Im no Labir Chibazaka, we shall use him. This Aigan Aigan basically says, Yabir Chibazaka may be perhaps also permitted the egg on Rosh Hashanah. So, why am I saying that an egg is forbidden like Rav Shmuel on the second day of Rosh Hashanah? Because Rabbi Yechel ben Zakkai, um, Rabbi Yechel ben Zakkai he didn't talk about egg. Maybe he also permitted egg as well. So, he says, no, ki imnu a'edis, abrabeyel imnu. All we find in Rabbi Yechel ben Zakkai in his Takana says that we will now, once again, we can accept the edis after Mincha is no longer any concern. But nowhere did he explicitly say, and now the egg, therefore, laid on the first day of Rosh Hashanah, we could have on the second day of Rosh Hashanah. Because the Sveik of the Yemen doesn't say that, which means that the original Isra of the egg remains intact. That's what Rabbi Yisra says. Oh, what are you talking about? Oh, to beye be minyan mi habe. In the first instance, in the first instance, did the Chachamim ever ask her an egg? They only said, we don't accept Eidus till after Mincha. Where did the egg come in from? 
because we, once they said we don't accept Aiden after Mincha, the Aiden came, so we know that it should be Rosh Hashanah today, but we decided to delay it till tomorrow, and we continue the rest of today as Rosh Hashanah. That means no longer Sveikah the Yemet, it's a Vade the Rabban, it's like one long day. So they, that's all they said. Nothing, never spoke about an egg in the first place. So why would a Bechem Zaki have to come and permit it? No, boss, the egg is a direct consequence. I'm going to buy it. Up to Beya B'mini Mehavah, did they ever talk about an egg? Beya B'Eidah Talim Musa. Once they came out with that about the law, about the egg, it's automatically it, 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 one of the ramifications of the laws of the egg. Is Eidah, um, it's, it's um, so Talim Musa, it's an Eidah, it's a Beya. When the Eidahs were no longer accepted after Milcha, the egg, then Rosh became a Vada like two days, so therefore the egg became also. Each to the Eidahs, if Rosh came along and said the Eidahs now permitted, then Ishtar Beya. In fact, the Mephoshim have a hard time understanding, so what was Rabbi Yisrael's Habman? Rabbi didn't know that. So they want to say an interesting thing, that you need, you don't need as much power to, to prohibit something as to, to permit something. To prohibit something, you know, you can never get it wrong. So they prohibited, prohibited something. So therefore, they didn't, in aviation, they felt they didn't have to, you know, officially or formally say an egg is also Rosh Hashanah. When they say we no longer accept ages, the egg automatically is also, and it's tantamount as if the Bezin ruled that, because it's very easy to come along with the history. But when they, they came to permit it, you have to explicitly rule that this is permitted. Because uh, when it comes to permit something, you need big places. You have to know, you have to, you have to come with, with a strong basis. That was Abiyas' argument. And Abayi says, no, just like whatever you need to do to be Mata, you need to do to Asa. So you need a bezin to Mata, you need a bezin to Asa as well. It didn't happen, then we don't need a bezin to be Mata. Okay, that's their argument and Abayi. Now the Gemara says, Adav and Rabbi Shalom Tavai, they both sort of learn like Rabbi Yisrael, but differently. They also agree that what Rosh Hashanah today is like one long day in there for an egg laid in the first day, also the second day. And you'll notice we make no difference at Yisrael, of course, Lars is only Rabbi who said that. And they came from the city of Kbei Kluchi, both Rabbi Adav and Rabbi Shalom. I mean, they say, it's also forbidden today, but my time of why? Because in the very near future, the basement will be built again. And with William Martinez, we believe every day the basement will be built today. That's why Kainim should maybe shouldn't drink, as we'll see in Machlech is a Rebbe because maybe they don't need to avoid it today. The game will say, Last year, Mila Chalnu Beya, the Yom Tashani, and we're worried that if we're going to allow them to eat this, what happens? The base meat will be built today, then we'll go back to the Takana that after Mincha we won't accept any more aid. And if we go back to the Takana that after Mincha we won't accept any more aid, then the, the Birashana comes back to one long day. And then the egg the first day will eat also the second day. But people don't understand this whole cheshbon. And they'll say, oh, but last year we ate an egg that was laid the first day on the second day. Why can't we do the same this year? So that's why they decide, you know what? We're going to leave the takana the way it is. They don't know. 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 Even the base is rebuilt, but how can they um, overturn Takana Yecha Bezaka? He came along and he said that this is how it should be. So, especially if you learn Chisa Mason 40 years later, they won't come back to all these Sadiqim. So, therefore, the, the caliber that we have today is not God of How can we overturn Yecha Bezaka? He says you could accept Aidim and everything over there. And they all ask that question. So, some, if you remember, we had the Mason Adam Chisa says in the Maryum, the Chisa of Sachim. Of course, the other basis that the motion on will come back right away to help us guide us in the base of the English. So therefore, we'll have a bezin that's greater. Or here's different. We're not introducing a new halacha. We're bringing it back. The original halacha, which the, which the only reason why we stopped it is because it's no longer applicable. Now it's applicable. That automatically can come back. In fact, it, we don't need a bezin to bring it back. It's not like we're abolishing Bicham Zakat Takana. We're bringing back the Takana of Bicham Zakat abolished. If it's not a problem, so if you're worried about from one year to the next, eight is not me so we shouldn't accept the eight is as well. My time of Mahidi Barbas Midrash, so the Khaida, even to why the Bishop Zaka say we're allowed to accept eight all day long. Why are we worried the Bishop Midrash will come back and 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 they'll, and the base, they'll accept eight all day long because the last year we accepted eight all day long. And, uh, and and uh, therefore, why aren't we worried about that? What's the difference? The egg or the edim? The Bircham Zaka's takana should not have been accepted. My time in Mahedi, but basically, you know, say, Shtakit last year, Milo Kabal, no edim, the Chikola, and Pulu, except the eight is all day long. Why can't we do this year? Hasha Namini Kabal, the Marahoki Hasha, what do you compare? Hasam over the eight is Masur, the Bezin, who handles the edim? Only Bezin, they're all coming in a Hamid, so they know the difference. Is Babayo the Hamas or the egg, every person in their own home, they, they have an egg laid on Yom Tif the, the first day, and they'll make a mistake. Rava comes along and says, 
Again, similar that the egg is forbidden for everybody today. Let's show it's one long day. And he says as follows not like uh, Rabbi Yasef, who said you need another bezin to be matted, and they wouldn't matter the egg. Or not like Rabbi Shalman and Rabbi Adda, who said, because we're scared that people can make a mistake and think, oh, that last year the egg was looked at this issue as well, and basically it will be built straight away. Rabbi says, Why? Because wouldn't Rabbi Zakeh be made even today? Okay, he made a takana that we don't accept Adim anymore. We're not going to listen to the testimony because they missed out this year. But what happened with Poil? Adim came in after Mincha. Uh, what he, what he, so what's he going to do? Especially if they came in very late in the day. It's too late now. So you say, you know what? Or well, even worse, they came very late in the day and we didn't have a chance to accept their ages, but we know that they had to say eight. So we know that today was really Rosh Hashanah. So you have 20 minutes left of the day. What are you going to do? Are you going to say, well, it's back to a weekday? Not at all. You will delay the Aiden until tomorrow. So tomorrow will be Rosh Hashanah. And today will be Kaidish. We'll, um, the rest of the day will be Kaidish. We don't want people to treat it lightly. So you see. Um, now, the Machlek is in how to show them how to learn. Rashi learns. So the main, if they come late, the way Rashi learns they come late, we'll accept the Aiden. But because they're so late, we'll say, you know what? We're going to keep tomorrow Rosh Hashanah as well. But because of two day yantif. Since if um, the, the original Zakana was to have two days yantif, Rabbi Rashi understood the Gemara. Rabbi is saying Rabbi Yechem never changed the law about having two days yantif. He just changed the law about accepting Adim. That, 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 you know, we uh, we can accept Adim all day long. But what happens with Paul if Adim come after Milch? Rabbi Yechem doesn't talk about it. See, so Rashi said Rabbi Yechem Rabbi is saying Rabbi Yechem never changed that part of the law. That even if the Adim come after Milch, we're going to leave the way, the, the tradition, which is to have two days Rosh Hashanah. And really, Rosh Hashanah is the first day. See, Kippur will count from the first day, but we're going to have two days of Rosh Hashanah. I is no longer Sveiki the Yemen, and even in Yerushalayim is no Sveiki the Yemen. We know today Rosh Hashanah. But since the tradition was to have two days, we'll continue. So it's a Vadai de Rabban. So Rav's answer basically was, Rabbi Yechem only changed the, the, the law about whether we accept the Edom or not, but he was not changing, traveling the tradition of keeping um, two days um, Yom Tov that. However, Tetz doesn't like the Pshat at all. Um, Okay, he doesn't like the pshat at all, and therefore he says, but no, the pshat is that he came right before dark. So you know that really today should be Rosh Hashanah, but you don't accept the Adim, you don't have enough time. So you push him off till tomorrow, so tomorrow is the real day Rosh Hashanah. And yet today, the rest of the day, we're going to maintain as if it's Rosh Hashanah, so people shouldn't then start treating lightly the first day of Rosh Hashanah, say, hey, who said people will come today, and so on. So therefore, we see it's like a vadai, in this case, it's a vadai de Rabban. But Omar Rav, Rav concluded, the Lord like Rav and all of these three arguments So if it was, it was laid on Shabbos the following day's Yom Tif, it is forbidden, that's for Chumrah. If it's laid on a normal Yom Tif, the first day Yom Tif, permitted the second day Yom Tif, that's for Kula. If it's Rosh Hashanah, the laid on the first day, it is Asr the second day as well, because it's considered a Yom Arich, one long day. Okay, we'll stop here. I'll continue.